Today we have video number eight in our 10 part series covering Samsung Goodlock here in 2024 in its entirety. With Goodlock, you can customize your Samsung Galaxy device much more than you can with just the regular settings. Samsung Goodlock can be found for free in the Samsung Galaxy store in most regions. And if you're having a hard time finding Goodlock, I'm gonna link a video down in the description that'll help you find it in your region. And it'll also show an alternative like NiceLock that you can install as well. Today we're gonna to head over to the Life Up tab and we're gonna be covering Notastar and Multistar. We're almost getting there. We've got four more modules after this. So let's go ahead and get started with Notastar. The first thing we'll do is go ahead and activate Notastar. And the way this works, it's pretty simple. You go ahead and uh, turn the power off on your device. And once you turn it on, you're gonna see these little arrows right here. This allows you to go directly to the Notastar notification panel and if you just use your regular biometrics or enter your PIN, uh, it's just going to take you to your default home screen just like you normally would. So as you can see here, I'll log in regularly uh, just with my biometrics and it takes me right to GoodLock. However, if I swipe up and then use my biometrics or my PIN code, it's going to take me to all of my recent notifications that I have in here. And you'll notice a lot of things here like this testing section and all that. We're going to go over all of this. So this is Notastar. You can think of this as like an augmented view of your notifications with full previews. So let's go ahead and take a look at all the settings. All right, the first option is application list. This allows you to filter on all the applications that you want to receive notifications for. And if you go up here to the top, we can also show system applications and we can also search for a particular application to get right to it. All right, so now we go back here. We have a filter list that we can apply. This is actually pretty sweet. So we go in here, we can add a filter. You see here, I have one already present called testing. And what this allows us to do is enter in a filter name, and then we're gonna add a keyword to screen for. So I've given the filter a name, and I'm telling it that I want it to screen for everything that comes through that has Samsung in it, whether it's an email message, a text message, uh, a periodical that comes through, anything like that. I want everything to go into a separate filter list and I can pick which applications I wanna perform that filtering on. So say for example, I only care about getting uh, Samsung filters separated for text messages and email. I would pick my text message and email clients in this list and turn all the other ones off. So I'm gonna let it screen for all of the applications and go ahead and hit save. We'll go ahead and go into Multistar real quick, all right? And now you're gonna see here at the bottom, I have a test two, and this is for any new Samsung stuff that comes in. And testing is for anything that has the word test in it. And you see here, I've got a couple notifications. So now when new Samsung stuff comes in, it'll come through here, and anything with the word test will come in this separate section. And we go over here to see all of our notifications. Using on lock screen, so if we turn this off, we go ahead and go to our power button, come back on here, you're gonna notice that we no longer have the notice star double arrows there and we just get into our phone like normal and we're gonna have our notifications show up in our regular notification list. Now, if we enable this option, this is what gets us that double arrow that allows us to get into notice star like we already demonstrated. Background color, this is fairly new to notice star and what this allows you to do, if you're not using a wallpaper on your lock screen, you can go ahead and change the background color from behind where those arrows are to something different. However, this next option takes effect under all situations, and this is for you to adjust those arrows. We can adjust the position of it wherever we want on the lock screen, as well as adjust the color. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And we can also go over here and adjust the transparency. So I'll go ahead and change it to low transparency. We're gonna hit save. And now we can go ahead and preview this in action. And there you go, it's moved up here and we change the color. All right, next we have sync with screen lock. Let me show you the effect with this option turned off. The way this works is we'll go ahead and go into Notice Star like usual, but uh, instead of putting in our pin or our biometrics watch, it's gonna go ahead and go right into our notifications. However, if we turn this feature on and we go back to uh, turning on our lock screen here and we go to swipe up on the arrows, it's now gonna request our biometrics to get into our phone so people aren't gonna instantly see your notifications. This next option is how long we want to keep the notification stored for. Uh, you can pick no limit if you want indefinitely, but the default is 30 days. You got a few different options here. Set app unable to clear notifications. So if we turn this on, we can go inside here and we can pick one or more applications. Let me go ahead and pick one real quick. I'll pick calendar. It's going to get added to the list up top here. And as you're adding these, you can just press and hold this 
to go ahead and delete it. I'm going to go ahead and add it back. So what's going to happen now, as I get notifications in, we have this clear button here. So this will clear out all of my notifications except ones that come from the calendar. And the only way to get rid of the calendar notifications would be to swipe them away with intent. So adding these apps here is a nice way of making sure those notifications stay present and don't get wiped out when you're clearing everything else out. And that's going to wrap up our tutorial on Notastar. All right, let's go ahead and hop into Multistar. The first thing we're going to do is go to our three dot menu and check out the credits. There is a weird little Easter egg on this screen. If you scroll all the way down and you start tapping on thanks to a whole bunch of times, it's going to say debug mode enabled. And if you tap on it several more times again, it'll say debug mode disabled. Here's the kicker though. I've gone through all of these settings. I've hopped on Reddit. I've looked everywhere online. I don't see a single mention about what this does. So if any of you happen to know what that does, please drop a comment down in the comment section and I'll give you props in the next video and we'll go ahead and take a look at what it does. That'll be awesome. All right, the first option we have here is I love Samsung DeX. So this is for our DeX functionality. So if we happen to have a USB-C cable plugged in, we can force high resolution display out over USB-C. Uh, do note that this does not work when you're using DeX in wireless mode. Uh, the next option is the ability to run many apps at the same time. By default, DeX has a five app limit for the number of apps that you can have on screen and work with at a time. This allows you to up it to more. Auto open last app, kind of self-explanatory. So when you start up your next DeX section, whatever app you happen to have had loaded up last will automatically load up the next time you start DeX. Set taskbar and header bar display time. Time is what's shown after these two dots here. And the way this works is if you put your mouse pointer over the taskbar or on the top header bar, this is the length of time that it takes for it to start to appear. All right, back to our main multi-star options. We have quick launch of the multi-window. So this allows you to press and hold the recent key to start a multi-window session. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and it gives you the option to open in split screen or open up in pop view. That's pretty sweet. We have the option to do either. And the way this works is we press and hold our recent key and that's going to start a multi-window session. That's pretty awesome. That's a nice little shortcut there. However, this doesn't really work well with the new One UI gestures. So you'll see here I have the button gestures turned on, which you can get to in your display settings navigation bar. All right, our next option is multi-window screen zoom. So what this allows us to do is we turn this on. We can pick between split screen view and pop-up view. And what this does for the respective applications is it tries to show more content on the screen by forcing screen zoom. And you see here, I've already done a previous search for Samsung. So we get quite a bit more here in our window here on this main window that we're interacting with. This next option, multi-focus, I definitely recommend you leave this toggle enabled at all times. And what this means is when you have two windows open and you're using one app, like we're going through GoodLock here in the top, and now we're going through Amazon down here on the bottom. So with that toggle turned on, what's going to happen is as you're using Samsung GoodLock, you can go back to Amazon at any time and it's not going to reload the app because what happens is when multi-focus is turned off and let's say you're up in this section playing with good luck for quite some time or you lock your screen and come back to your multi-window session when you go to tap back into Amazon it's going to reload the app because it's no longer going to be cached so this forces it to stay into memory I highly recommend you keep that on especially if you're trying to constantly use both apps in your multi-window session remove blur effect on adjusting split view. So what this is referring to is this. When we grab our handle here, you're going to see that everything blurs out quite a bit. So we'll go ahead and turn this toggle on. And now when you see this, you'll see no more blurring when we move the application handle up and down. Prevent pop-up view minimization. So if we go ahead and take this bottom window, and we turn this to a pop-up real quick. With that option not enabled, I can go here and I can minimize the uh, pop-up window like this. But if you turn that on, that'll prevent it from getting minimized. In the last option, set pop-up gesture size has been now moved to the advanced settings. And you can tell that we're in the advanced settings now. Um, advanced features, I should say, by going to this back arrow. And it's going to show you in the multi-window section and you're in the advanced feature section. So now you handle this in your main regular settings. An example of that is taking this good lock window and making it a pop-up just like that. So you can adjust the corner area of how much you're finger area you have for dragging down and making it a pop-up window. So it looks like we're done, but we're actually not. Hold on. 
If you happen to have a Samsung foldable, like we have the Z Fold 6 here, you have a whole nother section here called I Love Galaxy Foldables. Right, so the first option we have is under display camera with black. So if we go ahead and toggle this on, we go to our home screen here, you're gonna see it fills in the uh, under display camera with black pixels so you know exactly where your selfie camera is. And if you turn that setting off, obviously the UDC, the under display camera is gonna be hidden. Show the app always full screen when unfolding. So we can go in here and we can pick from our application list for all of the applications that we want to go from our cover screen all the way to full screen. Let's show an example of this real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and pick the camera application. Now I'm gonna open up the camera application. Let's go ahead and unfold the device. Boom, now we have a camera application and it's open up full screen. So you can force a lot of apps to go into full screen when you unfold it by toggling that on and picking your applications from the list. This next option kind of coincides with the option we just looked at. When starting the app, and this is referring to it in starting in full screen, do not show a notice pop-up. So what happens is with a lot of our applications, let me go ahead and demo this real quick. If you have an application running and you go to continue at full screen on the next screen, like I'm doing right here, a lot of non-Samsung applications will present a little pop-up here that says this app is not designed to run in full screen mode and you press OK to continue or you cancel out of it. So what this does is this allows it to basically intersect that message and apply it for you. So it's going to automatically try to always apply full screen mode without giving you that silly pop-up warning. So our next option is use letterbox. So what this is referring to is well it's not so much of a big deal now but more in the early days of the Galaxy Z Folds a lot of our apps wouldn't open up full screen. So you would go to load up uh, you know, a lot of your different apps and they would show up just taking up part of your screen because a lot of these apps weren't designed to work with the aspect ratio of foldable devices. So what Use Letterbox is referring to is whether or not you want it to look a little bit blurred on the sides of the application or to have a completely back background. Continue all apps on front screen. So when you have your Galaxy Z Fold unfolded like this and you turn this off, if we go to go over to the front screen, you don't notice anything, right? It doesn't continue the application. However, when we turn that toggle on, and we go ahead and close up our Z Fold, you're gonna now see the app continues on the front cover screen. And with that option enabled, that also enables another option to turn off the front screen when it's folded, kind of self-explanatory. You can turn that on or off, uh, but once you disable that, that option goes away. So for this next option, this is designed for apps that are typically designed to be used in landscape mode. So if you're working with an app like that and you wanna be able to use it in portrait mode, turning that option on is gonna force it to look okay-ish in portrait mode, as good as Samsung can do for that particular application. Uh, otherwise, it's just gonna stay in landscape and not move over. This option can also be found in the lab section under advanced features in our main settings. Another option that's here in GoodLock that's also been moved to uh, display full screen apps is setting the aspect ratio for each application and pick whether or not you want to show them full screen, 16 by 9, or 4 by 3. Now remember, we looked at this other option a little bit ago called Use Letterbox. So if you do decide to change the aspect ratio for any of those applications, that's when this feature will take effect. So on the screen, if I go ahead and switch Amazon Shopping to be from full screen, to 16 by nine. And you'll see here we have these nice blurry edges around the application. And if we turn Letterbox on and we go back to Amazon, you'll see here we just have black bars. But guess what? We're not quite done yet. Hold on. If you happen to have a Galaxy tablet, you get another set of features. I love Galaxy tablet, what do you know? So we go in here and it's really only one option, my friends. You can go ahead and turn this toggle on. And what it allows you to do is very similar, which we just saw it allows you to rotate to portrait. It says rotate to portrait with our best. So it's gonna take your landscape view like this and it's gonna allow you to switch most of your applications over here to portrait like that. You'll also see here that it's mentioned that it's been moved over to the advanced features lab menu. So you can also find this functionality there. All right, I think that wraps up this week's tutorial on Notastar and Multistar. Uh, we got two more good lock tutorials left to finish out the year and we'll wrap this series up. If you have any questions or comments about today's video, or if you happen to know about that debug menu that we looked at, please drop a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. Really do appreciate your time. And as always, thanks for watching.